What's up guys, Eric here, and I'm going to do another video today. I've already done a video. I did one this morning and I had my She-Hulk review yesterday, which by the way, if you missed the video this morning, talked about Stargirl, talked about Bad Girl and some stuff with the boys and a few other things. Link's going to be in the corner over here. And if you haven't seen my She-Hulk review, it's up. It's from yesterday. Um, I'm really enjoying reviewing that series. And if you want to take that journey with me, head over and show some love on that video. I'd appreciate it. Now, I'm doing this bonus video. I want to call it a bonus video because as I've started doing these news updates, I find the stories pop up and then I just want to make the videos. So if you're enjoying this content, I'm going to say this for the next couple of weeks as I make these, please show some love. Like the video, leave some comments, go over to the video from earlier today. Let me know you're enjoying this because if you guys like this, I will continue to do it. And I quite like talking about stories and, and breaking news um, as of recent. So if you're enjoying this kind of dive into the news, um, let me know so I can continue to do it because I'll do this along with my normal content. All right, here we go. This is a story about someone we have not talked about in a while, and that is Ezra Miller, who is back in the news. And today we have something that I guess could be considered a positive story about Ezra, considering you know everything that's been going on with them. Um, it goes, Ezra Miller meets with Warner's leadership in the Flash Course Correct. This is an exclusive for Hollywood Reporter, and as always, links will be below. Also, I'm going to talk about the Batman Cape Crusader animated uh, content after this, so stick around for that. Uh, the damage control meeting on the Burbank lot between the actor, their agent, and Warner Brothers' Michael DeLuca and Pam Abdi sought to quell concerns over the star's arrest and controversy. I'm not going to go over all of them here. It's been a lot. Uh, this is one of the most consequ consequential weeks in DC's history. Warner Brothers Discovery seems to have found the executive to lead that division's film and TV efforts. There were funeral screenings for the canceled Batgirl movie, which was quite, it's, again, controversial. Uh, go to my video from earlier today and read the comments down there. People seem to just hate that term even though it is accurate, regardless of who created the term, it's an accurate term. Uh, but go watch the video. The comments are, are wild. And the shifting of major tentpoles, Aquaman, The Lost Kingdom, and Shazam, Theory of the Gods, highlighted the studio's money woes. Also, there's an issue with whether or not the studio is broke. Um, some people did some number crunching and determined they were. I don't know. We, you know, they're, I'm not a number cruncher, so I just go with the information that's provided. And there we have it. All right, let's talk about this, though. Amid all, amid all the chaos this week on the Burbank lot, one could have easily missed a pair of figures walking around the offices and heading to a meeting of the highest order. But that's what Ezra Miller, the star of Warner's high-profile movie The Flash, and their CAA agent Scott Metzger did Wednesday, the same day a Batgirl screening took place. Hmm... Miller, who uses they, them pronouns, and their agent met with the new Warner Brothers uh, film chairs, Michael DeLuca and Pam Abney, to discuss not only how to stay on course for The Flash's June 23rd, 2023 release date, but to reaffirm their commitment to the movie, as well as apologize for bringing negative attention to the production and the company. Now, this has been a controversial stance that I have had about what has been going on with Ezra Miller. And I feel like the studio has been bending over backwards to make sure that this film happens because it's very expensive. Not only is it very expensive, but apparently it tested extremely well. It must have tested so well that no one wants to, to get rid of this movie. Also, I'm assuming that all of this is because when Ezra heard the studio going with like option three, like shelving the film, they were like, I, I'm, I have to do something. I have to do something. That's probably what was going through Ezra's mind uh, when that happened. So a lot of this apology tour seems very disingenuous. But on the flip side of that, if there is truly something going on with Ezra and they need help for it, I am glad they're asking for that help. However, an apology for bringing negative attention to the production and the company, that tells me right there, right there where Ezra's stance is, because that's not what they should be apologizing for. What they should be doing is going out to all of the people that have been affected by the damage it's done. And those people are the people that need to accept Ezra's apology. No one else, because apologizing to the company means that Ezra does not want to lose a paycheck. That's what that means. It's, it's a game really. 
I'm not saying I blame Ezra, but I'm saying that that's the way the game is played. All right, here we go. Over the past two years, Miller has been at the center of arrest and controversies, culminating with the actor announcing a mea culpa. I always pronounce that wrong. August 15th and saying they were asking for help for mental health issues. Said the actor in a statement at the time, I want to apologize to everyone I've alarmed and upset with my past behavior. Now, up until this point, I don't think I've seen anyone that was actually affected by Ezra accept that apology. And I'm going to reaffirm this. We cannot accept an apology for someone else who has been wronged. If someone were to break into my house and steal things from my house, other people who were not affected by that, that break-in, entering, and theft can accept the apology of the person that did it because they were not affected by it. Only I get to accept that apology. And that is what I've been saying about this before. That apology is a PR thing. It's a PR thing. It is not intended to actually look for forgiveness. And that is the difference between a genuine and a disingenuous apology. Now, will Ezra go out and try to make things right with all of these people? I don't know. But as of right now, it doesn't seem like that's it. So the focus is on pleasing the studio at the moment. Remember that. According to sources, Miller vowed to seek help after learning that DeLuca and Abdi were considering all options for The Flash, including scrapping the $250 million movie if things devolved further with Miller. So the, the, the fear of that is what drove Ezra to look for help. It doesn't matter to me why, I guess, you know, Ezra looked for help. The fact is that they're getting help and hopefully that helps. While the actor is said to have not minded the stream of bad headlines, they were spoken by the notion, spooked by the notion of the film getting canceled and jolted to take action. Says one source, they care about the Flash. It's one of their favorite characters to play. That is why this line in the above paragraph, it says, I want to apologize to everyone that I have alarmed and upset with my past behavior is completely 100% performative. I'm just calling it like I see it. Again, until I see some actual effort to make things right, I can't believe that line. I'm sorry, I can't. Uh, details of the meeting were not revealed, revealed, and it was the first time that Miller spoke with DeLuca and Abdi, who took over running the film division at the beginning of July and inherited a DC slate of movies in various stages of post-production. The actor was apologetic and affirmed their commitment to both getting care and to the production. Again, production and themselves none of the other people uh warner's had no comment on miller's representatives and could not be reached for comment which is why i think based on all of this that it seems like it was a, supposed to be a secret meeting let me scroll up just in case all right i, I think i i think this this meeting was not supposed to necessarily come out um there's, there doesn't seem to be any, con like, they're not trying to talk with Warner Brothers, or they are, but Warner Brothers is not reciprocating. So all of this, like, according to sources and um, statements that were made before, uh, it doesn't seem like they wanted this to get out. It doesn't seem like they wanted this to be public. But now it's out. But it doesn't look bad for them. I would say overall, this is a very positive spin on everything that's happened, regardless of how I personally feel about it. I think that this was intended to be a, a positive spin. So maybe they'll make a statement. I don't know. Warner had Warner's had no comment, and Miller's representatives could not be reached for comment. So I don't think this was supposed to, to get out. The move comes as the work for The Flash, directed by Andy, Andy Muschietti. <laughs> Muschietti, I'm having a hard time talking today, moves full steam ahead with the Warner Brothers Discovery CEO, David Zaslav, not wavering on the release date, even as Warner's this week pushed Shazam Fury of the Gods out of 2022 and Aquaman 2 back from March 2023 to the Christmas of that year. I don't think Aquaman is going to come out at Christmas because I, I misspoke in another video, but there is an Avatar movie that comes out literally that month next year. And as much as Aquaman is a crowd pleaser, if Avatar from this Christmas makes over a billion dollars, Aquaman will move. It'll get pushed back into 2024. Mark my words.
All right, last part here. After months of upsetting headlines about Miller, the mood regarding The Flash is more hopeful on the lot than it's been in some time, even if the movie still has a ways to go before the ultimate release date. Still, the movie was receiving some of the highest scores at test screenings since Christopher Nolan's Batman movies and executives and creatives believe they have the goods to reach, have a critical and box office hit that lives up to, the, to those scores. So, um, yeah, this is one of those things where this is all spin. This is all spin. They They are hoping that this will erase everything that has happened with Ezra over the last like year and some change. I don't know how long it's been uh, since all of this nonsense started. Um, they're hoping that this will fix that. But again, it's performative and it's because there's a lot of money on the line and there's a potential for this movie to be a box office success. But I don't think it's going away. There's still court cases that are happening. And I don't know if I believe Ezra is getting the help they need. I, I don't know if I believe that, but we will see. I am hoping for the best. I just want to put that out there. I'm hoping that Ezra gets the help they need. And I'm hoping that everything works out the way it's supposed to. Okay. But I'm not optimistic at all. Just not, just not. All right. Uh, with that being said, there's one more quick little story that I saw pop up right before I uh, started recording this video. And this is actually a very good thing, right? So according to Discussing Film, um, Apple TV and Hulu and Netflix are already highly interested in acquiring Batman Cape Crusader. This is the animated series that was attached with J.J. Abrams and... Um, you know, that the Matt Reeves and, and just, it's supposed to be this classic like Batman story. Um, and a lot of people were excited about it and it was kind of confusing that Warner brothers decided not to go with this. Um, but this is promising and more so than a live action thing. I think live action stuff is harder to market this. I think, especially if it goes to like Netflix, I think would be a huge success. Netflix would would be very happy with this with this animated series. I think they would be very happy with it. Um, as much as I complain about Netflix, I think that they at least try to cultivate some really good animated stuff. So I would be okay with seeing this at Netflix. I just think it's really, really, really fucking weird that Warner Brothers doesn't want um, this Batman animated series. I, I just, it's a little baffling to me. Um, anyway, that's pretty much it. Uh, make sure you check out my video from earlier today. Please show, show some support over there. My she Oak review from yesterday. I forgot my banner at the bottom. Let's make that scroll. Here we go. Um, where's it at? It's, oh, there we go. I think that's the right one. Please be the right one. It is the right one. Uh, if you're watching my video here, you want to stay up to date on breaking news about all the stuff we love. Please make sure you subscribe to my channel. Leave a like on this video. Leave a comment down below. Give me your thoughts and opinions on all this. Whether you agree or disagree with me, just be respectful in the comment section and I'll return the favor. And if you're not, I can be an asshole. <laughs> just so you know. But I appreciate all the love and support. Thanks so much to the Team Eric members that help this channel keep going. And if you'd like to become a Team Eric member, make sure you check out the join feature. And if you just want to help support the channel one time, there is a super thanks. And you can leave a highlighted comment down in the comment section. Uh, everybody gets to see and be jealous that you have a nice, bright, colorful comment. So uh, I do appreciate it. That's pretty much it. I'm out of here. See everybody at the after party tomorrow. Yes, there is a live stream tomorrow. Surprise, surprise. I've got some shocking news. So join me at the after party. See you then.